Good news. The car is still in one piece, obviously, since it's driven back home after that dyno. But we had some small issues, so let's go ahead and talk about that. First and foremost, uh, FedEx fucked me. This new 76.48 inch belt, which replaced the old 77 and a half inch belt, which was just way too long. Thought we had belt slip issues, so that one ended up being a partial fix to our problem. But we also had issues with this. This was choking two pounds of boost out of the car. So this 295 and 91 lower setup on this ported, mildly ported head unit should make about 18 pounds. With this on, it only makes 16. So we've left this on just to be safe during street driving and cruising around town since we also had some belt rub issues on the belt drive bracket immediately underneath the throttle body. But this was all torn apart about an hour and 15 minutes before I was supposed to drive the car from here 20 minutes over to the dyno, but thankfully belt ended up showing up on time. We were able to jam everything back together and make it there with about five minutes to spare. The other issue was that my old battery went kaplooey, so we ended up replacing it with this uh, unnecessarily bright excess power. Apparently these are phenomenal. I know a bunch of people locally who have them and rant and rave about them, so hopefully this uh, lasts me a good long while. Our biggest issue though is we think we are losing control of the valve train at 6,000 RPM. So remember previously with the 3-1 upper which is no longer on the car and the 9-1 lower which is still on it, the car made 12 pounds. So with the filter and the elbow off we made 18 pounds so we had about a 40% jump in boost. I think this is going to be way too much long term for these 1209 uh, pack springs that are underneath the valve covers and the current camshaft that's in the car. We had a couple people look at the data log already and a couple people go over the camshaft specifications for this 427 cubic inch start block based uh, long block and they think that this camshaft is just not being used efficiently and we may be losing control due to the back pressure on the valve springs from the blower. When we reviewed the graphs, it's got a very hard dip and boost. It drops from about 18 with that filter off to 13, 12 and a half above 6,200, 6,300 RPM. So we're definitely having some sort of boost loss somewhere. We don't think it's ignition related for the power drop that happens because the graph goes up and up and up and then it stops and goes straight down. So we don't think it's ignition related. We've tested three different sets of coils, two different sets of harnesses. We've ruled out the coils as being a possible culprit for it. We know that those are strong, good, in decent working condition for this application, but we still think it's a mechanical internal issue with the camshaft. So there's a possibility that we may be sliding a new bump stick, a new set of valve springs and push rods and lifters into this thing, possibly this upcoming summer, this season, 2023. But we did find some interesting information on the dyno. So we were looking at the fuel flow calculations and we saw that previously with the old 3-1 upper and the unported head unit, when it was using about 800 pounds of fuel an hour, we ran out of fuel injector on the old ID1050Xs, which have since been replaced. We ran out at 700 wheel horsepower and 760 pound foot. The car still shouldn't get really good. It was super sketchy with the old 390s that have now been replaced by a 307 rear gear. But this time, the graph went up and up and up, even with simulated inertia off on the dyno. And we noticed that the car was consuming over a 1,000 pounds of fuel an hour. But the graph on the dyno showed that it was making the same power with inertia on or off. But it's consuming a lot more fuel, good AFRs. Uh, TPS was 100%, everything else was functioning correctly in the car, decent IATs once we iced it down since it got a little warm on the dyno, just the blower did thankfully. But we're not quite sure if we are going to be believing the dyno graph. The car certainly feels faster, it'll still break the tires loose in mid-second gear, sometimes third gear if you're a little hard on it, even with a brand new set of ET Street R's on there that are nice, fresh, soft, and sticky. We're still not sure if we should believe the dyno uh, since the personal co-owner of Scram Speed's personal car, uh, which went out this past year in 2022 and basically swept his entire class in drag week as a mid-low seven-second street car. Um, that car it showed on the dyno on 30 pounds, the car only made 700 horsepower. So they've been having dyno calibration issues and apparently Mustang is a giant pain in the ass to work with on that. But the reflection in the fuel flow shows that the car is using about 850 or 900 wheel horsepower worth of fuel, even at 6,000 RPM, right before we would start to potentially lose control of the valve terrain. From that, everything else is functioning perfectly, thankfully, which makes me very happy. 
don't really care that the car didn't produce some like stellar you know thousand wheel horsepower on the dyno don't really care about the graph the car is still brutal to drive out on the street even though it's more quiet it's more comfortable it's got more tame rpm cruising i cruise 65 70 miles an hour at 18 1750 rpm uh, we got the tack working again which is a very nice thing to see after two years of no tack and uh, just kind of flying blind on when to shift but either way the car survived 14 or 15 pulls over the course of six hours on the dyno which is the longest i've ever spent on the rollers we mostly spent a lot of that time just trying to figure out where the hell our boost loss was coming from until we deduced that it was this with a little bit of reasoning and uh, trying to figure out why it was keep nosing over power at 6,000 RPM. At this point in time, all the people that we've talked to that really understand how camshafts respond, especially even with a heavy valve spring to a substantial jump in boost pressure, a lot of what we've been seeing is pointing towards the camshaft that's buried in that motor and possibly a, either a weak set of valve springs or not heavy enough valve springs. Either way, the car is definitely not finished. I still have to put on a new front bumper, but we'll probably wait to do that for a couple months until after one, my wedding is done and we get all settled in after that. And two, uh, we get the new bump stick slid in since if that bumper does have to come off and this all has to come out, then I don't obviously want the new bumper tabs, which even though they're new, they're still fragile just due to a poor design. I don't want those bumper tabs to break. So once that new bumper goes on, it's a one and done deal, never coming back out. As I said, the car drives really nice now. It drives a lot nicer than it used to. Thankfully, everything is back together on the interior exactly how I was hoping it would be. And these new trim inserts look wonderful in the car, even though I still have crap sitting in here. So I do need to find a new old stock set of these upper inserts to pull the door guards back out and uh, have the outers done curved down here in that same orange suede. I'd like to keep this lower portion is still the black leather. Uh, just so that way, if you do have, if I do have anything on my arm, I won't just directly ruin anything if this is all orange suede. But everything is uh, working exactly how I want it to. So we will hopefully be slipping a new camshaft into this thing possibly this summer. Uh, we still need to have Thompson review the data logs, make sure everything is kosher on their side, and uh, basically nail down if it's a camshaft or not. But the car's using a shit ton of fuel. It's nice and happy. The car shits and gets on the street. Uh, it's actually kind of scary to me right now, but I'm sure once I get used to it over a month or two that I'll uh, be ready for a little bit more. So we will figure out what's going on. They've seen this kind of thing happen before where a camshaft might work at 10 pounds and not really want to work that well at 18 pounds, not quite as efficient as it needs to be, or just loses control of the valve spring. They saw it in another customer car. That's actually another sponsored car aside from mine for their shop. Uh, and that car, they did a camshaft and spring swap with an F1X Pro Charger already on the car. And that car picked up almost 300 wheel horsepower and the fuel flow reflected that change in power on the dyno. So I guess this is a tale of the never-ending project, uh, but either way, again, the car feels strong, everything works, it's still a nice turnkey application that cruises out with a mostly full factory interior, and uh, everything works as it should, so I'm still happy, the car still runs great, fucking moves out on the street like you wouldn't believe, just makes a wall of torque uh, pretty much all the way up to 45, 5,000 RPM, but... We'll get this RPM issue sorted out, we'll keep everybody, all five of you that care about the build log or uh, any updates on it, um, and uh, we'll see what she'll do this summer.